what the best thing I can suggest is really studying your genre, who's writing about what you, what kind of music you're putting out, follow that writer, follow that, you know, DJ, make the connection, follow them on Twitter, read as much as you can from blogs. Blogs are great. Don't ignore blogs because you know what? Today's blogger, it's tomorrow's Rolling Stone writer. Welcome to the Female Entrepreneur Musician Podcast with Bree Noble. Bree is a musician, entrepreneur, speaker, and founder of Women of Substance Music Radio and Podcast. Bree's interviews with successful female musicians and industry pros are both inspirational and informational. She also answers your questions about the music business. Bree is on a mission to help you create great music, connect with your fans, and grow your business, and to truly become a female entrepreneur musician. Hey, this is Bree Noble, and you're listening to the Female Entrepreneur Musician Podcast, where we talk about making great music, connecting with your audience, and growing your business. If you haven't already, I want to remind you to grab our 19 sources of income that you probably haven't considered for your music business. It's a great little resource. It's specifically for female artists, and it talks about some income streams that I used in my business and other artists that I've talked to have used successfully in their business. So it will give you some ideas that maybe you haven't considered and that can expand your income streams because as musicians, we're all about income streams because sometimes one income stream has more in this month and one has more in the next month. So it's good to have a bunch of different streams to make up your monthly income. So you can grab that just by going to femusician.com. That's for F is in female, E is an entrepreneur, musician.com. And right on the front page, you can just click on the button to get that free report. Now let's get to what we're going to talk about today. And I'm really excited to have this guest because she's going to talk to us about a new service that's going to help you get people to your events and sell tickets to your events and make it much easier for you to do that, especially if you're touring, because you're able to use this service online. It's completely um, shareable by social media. So it's really easy to get this in front of your audience to get them to buy tickets to your next event. Even if you're in Florida and they're in California, they can buy tickets when you're not there. So I'm going to be talking with Denise Kovalovich, who's going to tell you about this great new tool called Event Hustler. So here's some information about Denise and her background. Denise Kovalovich is the CEO and owner of DMK Publicity, a full-service public relations firm that specializes in the entertainment and music business. Denise has over 15 years' experience working with some of the biggest bands and artists in the industry, ranging from Judas Priest to Steve Vai. Today, she's talking to us about an exciting new company that she represents called Event Hustler. Here's my interview with Denise Kovalovich. So that's a little bit about Denise Kovalovich. So Denise, is there anything that's not in your bio that you want to share that maybe is a little more personal about yourself? Um, sure. I guess um, I would like to let listeners know my public relations experience is a little bit more varied than just music. I've worked in a variety of industries. I've actually worked with um, a lot of celebrities, fashion, restaurants, and I worked for the retailer QVC, um, actually handling a lot of the musicians that came onto QVC, which I'm not sure a lot of people are aware of. Um, it was yeah, I was going to ask you about that. I was not aware of that because I don't watch QVC. Like, what are they selling their albums or yes, what are they doing it's on that? It's actually a really interesting format. Um, we have a lot of artists that would come onto the network and they would be selling the actual physical albums. Can you believe it? People are still mm-hmm. buying physical albums. And they would perform and do a brief interview, kind of a behind the music kind of format. And it was astounding the number of units that would be purchased within the hour. So my job was really to, you know, do the publicity on behalf of the artist, but then, you know, serve as the liaison between QVC, the publicist for the artist and the record label. So they, um, QVC brought me in to really 
you know, fulfill that position because of my music experience. So it was, it was really kind of an interesting role and, um, really got to see a whole different side of the business. Yeah. Yeah. That is really cool. So I know you're not there now, but you didn't leave that long ago. Are they still doing this? Like in the days now of Spotify and down, you know, and online streaming and all that stuff, are people still coming on there and selling a bunch of albums? They are. And actually it's really fascinating because people, you wouldn't believe it. People really do want the physical copies of the albums. And what QVC did that I found was very interesting is they would create these unique bundle packages. So you weren't just getting the new CD, you were also getting bonus tracks that you couldn't get anywhere else. So it was incentive for, you know, the buyer to want to buy the physical album. But you also got that personal interaction with the artist that I think so many people crave these days. And so you're watching the program, you're seeing them perform. Um, but you know, you you're really getting to know that artist and know why they wrote that song and get that personal feeling of, oh, maybe I do want to buy this album now. You know, I get to know this artist better. And it's that connection that I think a lot of people crave and are missing with the downloads today and, you know, that kind of, you know, the way the industry is turned. I think that's so true because I know myself, you know, I'm a huge fan of Behind the Music, the show, mm -hmm. and I haven't seen it on much lately, but I used to watch it all the time. And every time I'd see an artist that I really didn't know very much of or was not really in a genre that I normally liked, I would always come away going, Oh, I really like a few of these songs and I would go over to my computer and I'd go in and buy them. Right. Exactly. You know, yeah. and to be able to do that immediately and have a specialized bundle, I can see how that would be popular. And I'm a big, I'm still a big fan of, of saying that people buy CDs because mm -hmm. they do, especially in concert settings. Mm -hmm. And I think especially with independent artists, because you can't just go buy them or they're not as easy to find. And when you connect with them in concert, you know, they're right there and you're actually speaking with them. It makes you want to buy their CD Absolutely. more. But I, but I think with these bigger artists, um, getting a little more personal like that, I, I can see why that's a huge draw. Can you mention a few of the artists that you, that you got to work with? Absolutely. Um, it was actually, um, <clears throat> and people, you know, when I tell my friends and other people, they're like, no way, you know, they went to QVC, but you know, I worked with James Taylor. I worked with Justin Bieber. Um, he was actually <laughs> on QVC twice and he was great. I met his mom. He was fabulous. So, and that was a few, only a few years ago, but um, the Beach Boys, when they released their new album, they were on QVC. Hall & Oates came on QVC. Willie Nelson was on QVC. Cheryl Crow. So it was really, um, then we had 50 Cent. Um, I think he changed his name again. I don't know. But <laughs> <laughs> so it was really a diverse, you know, eclectic group of artists that I got to work with every single day. And it was everybody that came on was just so lovely and appreciative of the operation and what they got to do. Because I don't, I think artists kind of miss that connection, you know, getting to tell their story and, you know, get to get in front of the cameras and, you know, explain what is behind the music, so to speak. Yeah, I agree. I bet. <clears throat> I bet the artists actually really enjoy doing oh, that. Oh, they, they freaked out. You would not believe it. They would come to the QVC and think, oh my God, they wanted pictures with the host. They wanted, you know, they thought they were going to the Tonight Show. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> that is funny. That it, is funny. It was great. It was a really great experience. So it was fun. It was a lot of fun. Well, obviously they contacted you for that job because you already had experience in music PR. So how did you get started in that? Oh my goodness. Well, that's, um, it's kind of a, it's a funny story. I mean, I have obviously always loved music, but I started out as a writer and I worked as a music writer for my college paper, just, you know, you know, any bands that were playing in bars or, you know, just covering that kind of thing. And then after college, I wanted to go into public relations, and but I really craved that writing experience. And to be honest, my first job out of college was, you know, you take what you can get, you know what I mean? So I worked in a PR agency and, you know, it was a lot of corporate clients and I really missed that entertainment and that music side. So I volunteered my services to local bands. So I would do the PR for their <laughs> local gigs and, you know, things like that. And 
on one particular occasion, I was working with a band out of Philadelphia and they were opening up for Judas Priest at the Electric Factory. It's, you know, a pretty big venue here in Philadelphia. And I secured more press than Judas Priest did. (laughs) (laughs) So I get this email from Judas Priest's publicist saying, who are you? And can we meet you? And from there, I happened to strike up a conversation. It took about a year going back and forth with this company, you know, just seeing what they were about. And they offered me a position. And ironically, they are located right here in Pennsylvania. And you wouldn't think a major publicity firm would be located in Pennsylvania, but they were. And I moved and took the job at the time I was in New Jersey. And I moved up to Pennsylvania and took the job. And that's how it all began. So it really just started with me offering my services up and just gaining the experience any way I could. Now, was that agency working with a lot of different, because I noticed there's a lot of heavy metal kind of groups that you worked with. (laughs) Oh, yes. Um, And it's quite funny because when you see my picture, you're kind of like, wait, this girl's working for heavy metal. Um, But yes, we, they specialized in heavy metal. Um, So when I worked for that firm, I worked with everybody from Judas Priest to Iron Maiden, um, Helmet, gosh, I could name uh, Clutch, um, everybody that was very heavy. But then we also had some classic rock, um, Foreigner, um, Kansas, a lot of, you know, they kind of run the gamut. But what's interesting about this PR agency is they really worked on a project basis because what happened at this time period is the record labels were really cutting their PR staff and their marketing staff. This is when kind of the music industry got into some financial troubles with the downloads and things like that. They were laying off staff. So the labels would approach our firm and say, look, I've got to release this album. We need support. And they would come to us and we would be the PR firm for, say, releasing um, one particular instance was Judas Priest's major box set that year. So we released the box set and kind of handled all of the interviews um, everything that they did, um, taking them on media tours, getting reviews, everything. So just because they didn't have the record labels, didn't have the bandwidth to handle such a project. So we worked, we were very fortunate and I was very fortunate to get a major crash course in music publicity that way and really work with some huge metal acts, some huge classic rock acts, and then, you know, some what we call baby bands, some emerging artists too as well. And then, so that's a whole different PR campaign, you know, really working from the ground up to establish them. So, you know, um, got to work with a variety of artists and see how it's done. So it was very, very interesting and very informative. So were there any that you worked with from kind of a baby band that ended up becoming big? I'm trying to think. Some of them went to Europe and got really, really big. One of the most exciting projects I worked on was I actually worked on the first Warp Tour. Oh. That was crazy. And a lot of people thought that Kevin Lyman was out of his mind. What are you doing? What These skaters, they don't have the money. They're not going to come. That kind of thing. Um, So that was a really interesting experience for me and seeing how a tour at that magnitude gets put together and how you secure sponsorships and how you line up these bands and then executing the tour press and making sure that each band is well represented and you know, then watching it grow over the years has been amazing. So that is one example of an idea that everybody thought was crazy. And now it's pretty much become the formula for a lot of festivals. So that's one of the examples. That's funny. What year was that? I rem- well, I kind of well, remember. I'm tra- oh, I'm trying to think. My goodness. It was, right, that must have been in the... 2000. Yeah, like See, yeah. early 2000s, I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah, and there was a lot of <clears throat> young bands that went on to do some really great things. One band in particular, they're called the Street Drum Corps, and they're known for um, 
they're kind of, they bang on drums and things. I mean, <laughs> drums, but garage, you know, um, garbage cans, kind of things like that. I'm not doing them any justice here, but they're really interesting because they could take anything and make it into music. And it was really fascinating. They were all punk kids, really. And I say kids because they literally were kids. They were 17, 18 mm. years old. And they got put on the Warp Tour probably on second stage at 11 a.m., you know, that kind of thing. And I kept working with them, working with them. And then they hired me on the side. And I got them the cover of Modern Drummer magazine a year later. So they went from being an unknown to the cover of a magazine, which was so amazing and just such a really great, exciting moment for both of us. <laughs> wow, that's cool. Yeah. So do you think that independent artists, um, a lot of them obviously don't have the kind of budget to hire somebody like you. Do you think they have any chance whatsoever to get anywhere near the kind of press that you can get them on their own if they apply certain strategies or is it just impossible because you have to know the right people? Um, I think that honestly, well, I, I think the way that my um, agency operates, <clears throat> I put together different packages. I'm very different than other publicity firms in that I understand that our artists out there, they don't always have that massive budget. And I I get that. I understand that. I've been there. You know, I know a lot of artists, you know, that are just starting out. So I put together packages that can be reasonable for artists. So say you just want a really great press kit. I can do that for you. I'm not like a full service agency that'll lock you into a one-year contract or something like that. So in that realm, I'm a little bit different and I'm willing to work with an artist in some regards. But yes, the answer to that is yes, you can get press and you can develop a foundation for yourself if you're willing to put the time in. You, what The best thing I can suggest is really studying your genre, who's writing about what you, what kind of music you're putting out. Follow that writer, follow that, you know, DJ, make the connection, follow them on Twitter, read as much as you can from blogs. Blogs are great. Don't ignore blogs because you know what? Today's blogger is tomorrow's Rolling Stone writer. So mm. it's re really something that I stress very heavily to all of my bands and, you know, make that connection. If they write an article that you really like, don't be afraid to email them and say, you know, I really enjoyed that article. It really helped me. And they'll remember you. They will repost it, put it on your Facebook page, tweet about it. And, you know, it goes a long way with reporters. They just want to know that people out there are reading what they're putting out and are appreciative of what they're doing. So you can build those relationships on your own. Yes, it takes time. And I know as an artist, you're busy, you're making music. You know, I get that. But if you really want to start the foundation for a PR campaign, that's the best way to do it because it really is all about networking and building those solid relationships that, you know, one day are really, really going to pay off. Yeah. Oh, I love, I love all that advice. And my favorite quote there was that, that today's blogger is tomorrow's Rolling Stone writer. I mean, that is, that is so true. It's very true. And, and you know what I'm finding a lot of these writers are pulling double duty. I mean, they are writing for the New York times, but then they may have a blog, you know, that they're just writing for enjoyment. So you may hit them up on that blog and they're, they say to you, oh, you know what? Actually, I have a column in the New York Times. So I might, do you mind if I quote you for this? You know, you just never know. And so don't be afraid to reach out and don't be afraid to connect because they like to hear from you. And if you don't hear from them right away, don't be offended. <laughs> Believe me, even the best publicists in the world get ignored all day long. <laughs> That's true. And I think, <laughs> I just thought of this, you know, I think it's, it's important to, to let people know what you do as an artist, like not hide that even in just regular life, because I had an experience a few years ago where I'm at my daughter's soccer game and I'm talking to somebody, you know, and they're like, Oh, what do you do? And I tell them, you know, I'm a musician, blah, blah. blah and they're like, Oh, I write, um, you know, the entertainment section for the faith-based section of the Fresno Bee. I'm like, oh, really? Exactly. <laughs> like that was just, you know, the most perfect 
yeah, match there. Exactly. And how would I have ever known he was the grandfather of one of the people playing soccer? Exactly. You know? Yes, exactly. Don't be afraid to talk to people. Don't be afraid to reach out to people. I mean, it is, it's literally the best thing you can do for your career. Awesome. Well, so after you worked at QVC, you started your own agency, correct? And yes. how long have you been doing that? I have been doing that about, I'm coming up on two years now. Okay. And do you have mostly entertainment based clients or are you kind of taking the gamut? Um, it's mostly entertainment and it's mostly bands, but I've also do, I do have a few restaurant clients. Um, I do have a few authors, um, things like that, but I, it just kind of naturally fell into music. When I left QVC, it was funny because all of a sudden my phone just kept ringing and ringing and it was from all these bands I had worked with in the past. And they kept saying, oh my God, I was waiting for you to open your own firm. <laughs> so mm. wish I knew that sooner, but <laughs> you know, and it's been great. I've been very, very fortunate to be working with the artists that I'm working with. And I only wish I had done it sooner because I'm loving working for myself. And like I said, I am in a great position that I have the flexibility to tailor campaigns to what an artist needs and not just give an artist, you know, oh, here's my package, take it or leave it. You know, I can be a little bit more flexible and say, okay, what are your objectives? What do you really need right now that can help you get to that next level? Whereas a larger firm, really needs to lock you into something that you might be paying for something you don't even need right now. So that's why I started my own firm. I wanted to be able to keep it small and I keep it small on purpose because I worked in those large agencies and I worked, you know, with the larger, you know, corporate America and things like that. And there's nothing wrong with those, believe me. But I, for me, I really wanted to have that one-on-one -on -one attention and really put the focus on the artist and really help the artist out and, you know, give them exactly what they needed. I love that approach. And obviously you're passionate about, you know, helping musicians. So mm -hmm. it's, it's a perfect match. Yeah. So I, I, I want to talk about, um, our friends at event hustler.com yes. because they're the ones that put them in touch me in touch with you. Yes. And I really have I've started working with them lately. I really love what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And I want you to tell everybody exactly first of all, how did you meet up with them? Um how you know how are you helping them promote and you know what exactly is Event Hustler? Why should artists get involved with that? Well they are Abs First of all, they're absolutely great guys. Um, there's no doubt about that. And the one thing that I truly love about them, they're not, I mean, they are businessmen, but they're musicians. They're you and they're your audience. So they get it. They understand the hassles that can go on through the business. And believe me, everybody knows that. So what they did was they started Event Hustler as a way to put on shows that is easy, efficient, and it's free. So what it is, is it's a website that you go to, eventhustler.com, and you can set up your show, and it can be small, it could be a, at a bar, it could be at a park, it could be anywhere you want it to be. And it can be, it could also be huge. It could be large, it could be at a casino, it could be a promoter that wants to set up the show. And Basically, it takes two clicks. You just go to eventhustler.com, click on create event, log in. Um, if you want to, you can put your name in and a password, or you could just use your Facebook. I went in last night. I used my Facebook. I was right in. And then all you have to do is link it up to your PayPal account, put in the details, and you get to upload a photo, um, put in the details. And what's amazing about this is that you, the artist, get paid immediately. So as soon as somebody purchases a ticket to your show, that money's in your PayPal account. So there's no way, there's no, nobody's taking money from you, nothing. All the dollars are going into your account. So that is what I think truly different, differentiates Event Hustler from other platforms. And I think what really, really is great about this is that it's easy. Like I said, artists are busy. I mean, gone are the days when you're running around meeting your friend at the bar on a Thursday night. Oh, here's your 20 tickets. Oh, you know, where you're expected to move tickets and, you know, guarantee so many people to come to your show and that kind of thing. 
all you have to do is set it up on this website and it's done. It's literally two clicks and you're done. And even what's even greater is it even has a function where you can promote the show right from this website. So it's got all the capabilities and it's honestly the easiest thing that I've ever dealt with. And I'm not as media, you know, media and tech savvy as I should be in this realm, but even I figured it out and it, it was really simple. And that's what I loved about it. And coming from a bunch of musicians who have been through everything, that's what they wanted. They said they just wanted something easy and that basically the artist makes money. And at the end of the day, that's everybody's goal, right? <laughs> so that's what I really liked about them. And they're just really honest, nice guys. And that's what their main goal is, is to help the artist. So how do you use their site to promote on like Facebook or, you know, or how can you embed that in your newsletter? Is that really easy to do? Yes, actually, it's so easy. There's a button that you click when you go on to eventhustler.com and it'll allow, it'll say send link to and the link will go on to Facebook. It'll go to Twitter. It'll say share with friends. And you can actually tag some of your friends so that they can essentially become event hustlers themselves. And they can sell tickets too. So it's really kind of cool. It's, it creates a community experience. Um, it really is that easy. So it's, it's a very easy process. And for promotions, I mean, why do double duty? Why create that Facebook and invite and send that out plus send, you know, create this whole thing and on Eventbrite or, you know what I mean? Why take two steps? This will do it all for you on one website. And, you know, in talking with them, they were explaining to me that they even have more functions coming. That is really exciting. That's going to make promotion even easier. So there's a lot more to come, which I think is exciting. And What's more important, I think, too, which I really should touch on, just not for the artist, but I know that for artists, your fans are really important to you. For the fans, what is what makes this really unique is that the fan experience is so easy and you don't have the fan doesn't have to log in. So, you know, when you go to um, other ticketing sites. You've got to log in, you've got to create a password. They want, you know, all of your information. When you go to Event Hustler, you just click on buy ticket and you're done. Mm. So, and then you're not inundated with all those emails telling you about every single show that's in your city, that kind of thing. So I think if you want a better fan experience, then Event Hustler is really the way to go. And how have the venues responded to this? Because you know, I know a lot of times how it works is, you know, you, they collect at the door and then they take out their fee and they give you the money yep. or, you know, I guess this way they don't have to collect anything. Exactly. You just show up and you pay them whatever fee they require out of the money you already have. Yep, exactly. So it's actually, it's paperless and all the fans have to do is show up and your name's on the guest list and, or it will call and the, when you purchase the ticket, you'll get, you know, a something on your phone or in your email that looks like a ticket and you show it at the door, you know, as a backup if you need to, but your name will always be on the list. And like you said, the promoters at the venue, they don't have to deal with any of this. They don't have to deal with the money situation. It's literally seamless. So it's just a, a headache free solution to what was once a major issue, as I'm pretty sure everybody listening <laughs> has gone through at some point. Absolutely. <laughs> so you could you could walk in and hand the venue the list of the people that have already bought tickets. Is that how people are doing yes, it? Yes, exactly. Okay. Yep, exactly. And actually, or it can just get emailed right over to the venue, which is even better. So- oh, Okay. Yep. And then there's always backup too for every single person that purchased the ticket. So there's never, oh, your name's not on the list. I mean, how many times does that, that happen to you? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've all been there. So um, there's always a backup. And, you know, I think that 
you know, for artists, I think they really want to take care of their fans and make sure that they have the best possible user experience because, you know, it ultimately comes back on you, the artist. So you want to make sure, and, you know, the venue too. So you want to make sure that it's a really good positive experience. And I think that's what Event Hustler does. Now, there is a small fee, obviously, because they can't run the website for nothing. So what what is it? Is it a percentage of each ticket? Um, it's a $2 charge for the ticket for the fan, and that's it. Okay. okay. So depending on the price of the ticket, yes. then it's always $2. It's always $2. So you're not, you know, the fun convenience charge that always gets added on and, you know, that mm-hmm. can range from who knows what. That's There will never be any of that. It's just a $2 fee. So... That's the really great thing. And, and does that come out of the price of the ticket or is that added on? Like if, if tickets are $10, then do they pay 12 or does that, do you, does the artist just get eight? Um, they, I think it gets, it gets added on to the ticket. So, okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. But no other hidden fees yeah, or anything. Everything's very transparent as you're going through the process. And even if um, the promoter or the fan or the artist has any questions, if you go to eventhustler.com, there's an actual um, FAQ section and you can read through it and every question is answered very clearly. There's a contact and somebody will actually answer you, which is really nice. Um, So if you have any concerns or a little bit of reservations there, somebody will automatically get back to you and, you know, help you along in the process as well, which is really, really nice. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're a nice small company. Yes. They're very nice. And you know, what's great about it too, is it's not, the site isn't junked up with a bunch of ads that you have to kind of like go through and, you know, pop-ups and things like that. It's very clean. It's easy to use. And again, I think it's just a really nice user experience for everybody. Awesome. So what has been the experience through Event Hustler as far as the best way to promote events using that? Like what's been the most effective way? Well, right now we are really at the beginning of promoting Event Hustler and it, the idea and the concept has just been so revolutionary and just such a great concept that we've been promoting it through word of mouth and we've been promoting it through um, just our contacts and everybody's been so thrilled with it that they're passing it on to their friends and they're passing it on to their friends. And it's just been one of those things that people are like, why didn't this happen sooner? You know what I mean? So right away, we've already been getting, you know, some early adopters that way. Um, We're just gearing up for a really big promotional plan that's going to include, you know, some trade shows and, you know, some really big press announcements and things like that. So, you know, we're really excited about that. But so far, you know, we've just been testing it out on some musicians and some some of our venues that we currently work with and that you know as i said they the founders are musicians so they've been using it and everybody's been loving it so it's been a really positive experience and now we're really gearing up to really roll out the big pr and marketing campaign Mm-hmm. Well, I know some of my artists have started to use it and i think they're really excited about it okay. i especially like the idea that it's um you know you can be on tour And you can show up and you've got already this list of people that have already purchased tickets for something that was across the country, you know? Yes. That's the very cool thing. It's really neat. I love it. Great. Well, everybody who's listening, I want you to check out eventhustler.com because I think you're really going to love this new service. It's going to make your life a lot easier and your fans' life a lot easier and, (laughs) you know, less complicated and less fees and all that stuff. So check that out. Um, before we conclude, I want to shift gears and ask you one question. Sure. Do you have a, a resource that you would recommend a book or a specific uh, blog or website or anything to help artists with PR that are maybe just getting started? They, they want to start out getting some small press and then, and then maybe they can move up eventually to somebody like you. Sure. Absolutely. Um, My best suggestion is to, like I said, read as much as you can and read anything that is specific to your Mm -hmm. genre of music. See what kind of writers are covering you um, or your kind of music and get in touch. 
I particularly like Sonic Bids, obviously. Um, Musician's Friend has put out a fabulous online site. It's called The Hub. I'm not sure if you're familiar with it or if you're not. It's fabulous. It's a almost a to-do guide for musicians by musicians. And it go it has topics ranging from everything from PR to marketing to how to perform better on stage. Um, it's just a really great, you know, tool that I love to look at. I work with the writers all the time. They're musicians. So that's a really good resource. Again, that's called the hub. If you want to look that up. Um, I even I go to Inc.com. They always have really great marketing stories. And Forbes.com always has really great marketing and PR. And you can even hit things like, you know, ad age and thing, you know, places like that just to get, you know, some tips and tricks and, you know, a little bit more insight into some of the basics of public relations. I don't know if there's, I mean, if you get a public relations book, there's a lot of strategy that goes into that and that might bog you down. And I wouldn't want to, you know, kind of bog you down with that because I really feel like the more you can digest about the different, you know, genres of music and who's really writing about what you are playing or, you know, what's out there is the best thing that you could do. And that's where I would focus my time if I was a musician. And I think that's probably the best way to get started. Mm, that's great advice. Yeah, I publicize every time something comes out in that Sonic Bids blog, I publicize it on my Twitter and Facebook yes. because I think almost everything that they put out is is valuable. It's very quick to digest. Mm -hmm. I love it. And even if you get one tip from each one, it's worth it. it it's fabulous. I love it. It's well written. It's to the point, And it's, it's really useful. I just posted something to my Facebook page the other day and a bunch of my clients and other musicians were like, this is a fabulous read. This is amazing. Mm. So, you know, just, you know, some simple insider tips and, you know, like I said, as much as you can take in is, you know, my best advice possible. Well, this has all been super helpful. Oh, great. I want to give you a chance to let people know how to get in touch with you and how to find you on social. Oh, Perfect. Um, you can always reach me. If anybody has any questions at all, I am completely open to email. I'm on my email constantly. That's Denise, D-E-N-I-S-E, -E, at dmkpublicity.com. I'm also on Facebook um, under DMK Publicity. And I am on Twitter as well under DMK Publicity. So pretty easy. <laughs> very, very smart not to name your, your agency Kovalovich oh, or something because no one could spell it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that would be um, a nightmare, believe me. So, <laughs> And everybody remember to go to eventhustler.com. Yes. Check that out. Sign up. It'll take you like two seconds and just try out an event, even if it's just like yeah. an event you're doing at a coffee house and, you know, the it's just coming up in a week, you know, try it out and see how it works for you. Yes. And you know what? Let me know your feedback. We are so open to feedback. We want to hear from you, the artist, and we want to know what you have to say about it. And we're open to suggestions because like I said, we're just getting started. We were rolling out the campaign and we would love to hear your ideas and thoughts about it. So please. I agree. Know. Please send me feedback as well, because I'm in contact with Jeff and all the guys over there. And I just love to let them know what you guys think. Yeah, that would be wonderful. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Denise, for spending this time with me this oh, morning. And I really me. appreciate all your insight. Thank you. I really appreciate it. And good luck to everyone. You're welcome. Thanks so much. Now go out and make great music, connect with your fans and grow your business. Female Entrepreneur Musician has been brought to you by femusician.com and femalemusicianacademy.com with editing by Jen Eads of 317 Sound Design and music by Stella Ronson.